Welcome to day number two of the Cayman Islands Classic. We are in beautiful Grand Cayman here at John Gray Gymnasium. Four games for you on the docket today, four yesterday. Today, the first game of the day, we got Akron taking on Illinois State. Both teams looking for their first win of the tournament. Here's a little refresher of what happened yesterday. Akron narrowly losing to Clemson. They definitely made it a game in game one. Illinois State uh, was taken down by Georgia, so now these two teams are facing off. The winners from the games we just talked about, Clemson and Georgia, are, are coming out. They are facing off at 1.30. St. Bonaventure, Georgia State. Georgia State won that one. They'll be facing Creighton at 7.30. That's the winner side of the bracket. And St. Bonaventure and Boise State will also be looking for their first win of the tournament later today at 5. Welcome in to John Gray Gymnasium here in Georgetown. I'm Kristen Balboni. I'm your sideline reporter for the entire Cayman Islands Classic. We are so happy to be bringing you this tournament exclusively on Facebook. So maybe you watched yesterday. Maybe you're just tuning in for the first time. Here's what we want to hear from you this entire tournament. So first and foremost, write in the comments where you're watching from and who you are rooting for. I want to know. We're going to be reading your comments throughout the entire game. You can also post on Instagram using the hashtag Cayman Classic throughout this entire tournament. We're going to show your pictures during the broadcast. So if you're a fan, maybe you're watching from work, let us know your setup. Let us know how you are enjoying the game. Again, using that hashtag Cayman Classic. So Right on Instagram, who you're rooting for, where you're watching from, excuse me, right on Facebook that, post on Instagram using that hashtag and get involved in this conversation all day long. So first up, as I said, we got Akron taking on Illinois State. To talk more about this game, it's time to bring in my broadcasting partners, Noel Kozloff and Doug Gottlieb. Guys, we ready for day two? We certainly are. I'm just turning into, I think, I might just be Doug's personal Instagram photographer and then just post Doug's thoughts on Instagram and see how the game goes from there. Noel like Kozloff, Doug Gottlieb. So... In the opener yesterday with, well, Akron losing to Clemson, and now the quick turnaround, what's the challenge for, for both teams? Well, I mean, like, look, the player in me says, I love it, uh, especially both these teams lost. And generally when you lose, you know, if you've been in a high school team, you know, no talking in the bus, and everybody feels bad, and you watch the film, then you go and fight your way through it. Hey, look, you can delete that right away. Just drag it over to your trash and delete it. we got another game to play. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd be excited by it. Um, and I, I do think Akron gets a little bit of benefit because their game was over two and a half hours, you know, b before Illinois State's game was over, although Illinois State's game with Georgia yeah. was over at about the <laughs> half, so that might not really have mattered. Um, I, I think that the challenge is you didn't have you don't have a ton of of scouting in terms of putting it into play. You couldn't walk through things. You obviously the coaching staff knew you're going to play one of these two teams, and they saw them in person. So I'm sure they have everything that you run. It's just hard to relate to a college kid who's coming off of losing a game. Hey, we got to get ready for the next game, and they do this, they do that, the other thing. So you really just got to concentrate on personnel, what the guy who you're guarding and what the guy who you might switch up on does to be at his best and what you want to make him do to be at his worst. All right, so how about we concentrate on personnel? Let's start with Akron and Lauren Christian Jackson. Only 5'8", had a big second half. Yeah, diminutive point guard, transfer from Long Beach State. Um, he, he's not very big, but boy, he can really, really shoot. And he's going to climb India defensively. Now, I, I felt like Clemson's big guards really gave him fits when he was on defense inside the paint. But in the second half, huge reason that Akron got right back in the game and made Clemson really sweat it out was Lauren Christian Jackson's offense and his quickness. He also got to the line eight times. Malik Yarbrough never really dominated at any point during the game against Georgia. No, but that's against high major level uh, athletes. I think he'll struggle a little bit because he's not a great shooter, but he's a matchup nightmare at this level. Playing against Akron, he's a jump shot away from, you know, from, from making a lot of money at the next level. I, I think for George, it's about coming out and getting Yarborough going early in the game in order to get their offense moving. All right, so let's take a look at this starting lineup. So I almost said this afternoon. Well, I guess it all depends on where you're watching from. Akron will start Jamond Ivey and Lauren Christian Jackson, Janelle Banks and Daniel Utomi and Deng Riak. Up front for Illinois State, there is Malik Yarbrough, where is 52, Zach Copeland, Keyshawn Evans, William Tinsley, and Phil Fain, who struggled with foul trouble. He fouled out, only played 13 minutes in the opener yesterday against Georgia, an 80-68 loss. 
And Fane and Yarborough, that's what Illinois State's uh, basketball team is built around. They need to get off to a much more balanced start. Dennis Parker pulling for Illinois State. Jay pulling for Akron. Megan watching from Illinois State. It's normal Illinois. Just normal Illinois. About 125 miles from Chicago. Yarbrough. And the turnover on the first possession. That's where Yarbrough turns the ball over early. We've seen John Gross loving the energy. John Gross is an energetic dude. 17 and 19 now in his second season. As Akron three and one on the season, Illinois State two and two. Dimitri, rooting for Akron. Good to have you, Stephen Miller, at home watching Illinois State as Jackson goes all the way for two. You see a lack of communication from Illinois State defensively, allowing Jackson, who really struggles to finish over length in the lane, get a free run for that layup. There's Yarborough up over. The outstretched arms of Daniel Utomi. Utomi only runs about 6'5", and Yarbrough a little bit longer. Yarbrough too athletic for centers to cover him, and too big for threes, fours, and two, ones and twos to cover him. He is a matchup nightmare. Wide body and the travel on Utomi. Utomi loves getting in that lane and pivoting. Got himself caught up a couple times. Dan Muller in his seventh season now. 124 and 83 as a head coach, the four time Missouri Valley Conference tournament runner up. Three of the last four years trying to take this team to the NCAA tournament. Yarbrough in the post, strong move, right hand. Tapped around and back comes Akron right to left. Jackson spots up for the three. Tinsley had it, lost it, it'll stay Akron basketball. Uh, you can see from Illinois State that they've decided, hey, we're getting, we're getting our best player going. Yarbrough turns over the first time, scored the second time, and then missed a, a turnaround jump shot in the third possession. That's three possessions, three touches, your best player. That, by the way, is good coaching. Uh, the Illinois State switching, trying to switch all these screens. So you can pass over to Ivy. Ivy pulls up, tough shot. Ivy and Utomi, two very, very strong kind of three, four men for Akron. Jaden Sales, mom watching, Amy, hello. And on the rebound, Fane is foul. I love the idea your mom could chime in here, right? Like yeah. Your mom's watching. I just. Listen, this is, it's not going to be in spray paint. Just remember all the moms, dads, uncles, aunts, AU coaches, friends, family that are watching. Other people can read your comments <laughs> about teammates, coaching staff, and whatever. And there's Fane. I don't think we have Draymond Green's mom on Facebook. He's pretty vocal with her comments. You got two bigs, a big like Fane and a, and a swing big like Yarborough. That's a good place to start for Dan Muller. Tied at four, just over two minutes gone by as Jackson lost it and be out of bounds and then will stay active basketball. You mentioned Bill Fane, really struggle with the size and athleticism of Georgia. With this level, he goes right to React's head. That's tremendous footwork going to his strong right hand. Just three points yesterday on one of two shooting. Did have four blocks, but again, played just 13 minutes because all that foul trouble. There's React. He gets behind Fane for two. Well, React hit a three yesterday. He can block some shots, can really move. Like Fane a transfer. Evans off the mark on the three. Utomi has the rebound. Jim Traley pulling for the zips. I, I assume Alexander is too from Westerville, Ohio, as Utomi carried the basketball. Here's Rhea. Watch well, set the ball screen. And Ivy turns down the ball screen. React just keeps rolling to the basket. Keeps rolling. And pass it to a big guy. Keep it high. There's React. The East Carolina transfer. A nice shot reading Fane to see where he was before going to the basket. 
Copeland. Yarborough, beasting you, tell me. But there was something before, yeah, you told me tried to flop there, but something that I teach, I teach guys all the time is, Yarbrough catches in the post, and you tell me puts his hands on it. And the one thing about it is, sometimes players get affected by it. That's your body, that's your space. Watch him just knock his hand away. Bam, knocks his hand away. Sometimes guys are, have too, have, are too high leverage, you know, that, and it loses their balance. But more than anything, it just shows that you're not afraid of contact. Someone puts a hand on you in basketball, you're allowed to smack it away. No one's ever been called for a foul for smacking somebody's hand away. You can, you can smack away, or you can actually, what Michael Jordan used to do is hold on to their hand, <laughs> and then spin, and ultimately, they'll, they'll pull their arm away. So Jackson's gonna shoot a technical. It was a personal foul on Yarbrough, and then a technical foul as well. For what, for clapping? Couldn't have gotten a taunting technical. I understand, but that, that's, it. that's what we're doing now? I think it's out of hand. You still gotta be able to talk. Still gonna be able to show some emotion. I, I look, I, I understand the idea behind it. Like, you don't wanna start a fight. Like, we just, let's cut it right now. I do think, on the other hand, like, really good officiating is grab the ball, go up to the arbor and go, hey, that's it. Right. That's it. No more. Next one's technical foul. Jeff watching from Palm Coast, Florida, rooting for Akron. 8-6, zips in front. Travel by Tyler Cheese. Cheese had a very good game yesterday for Akron. Oh! Not a good looking shot from Utomi, and here's Evans. Boy, Christian Jackson gets up in you the moment you step off the bus. Bain from the free throw line, no. And there's Jackson with the rebound. Smallest guy in the court, pulls it down. Out there with Ivy, and Ivy waits for the react screen. Here's Cheese for three, around and out. I thought he got, I thought Cheese might have been fouled on the three-point shot. React really working inside. Looks like it's going to be a foul on the rebound. Well, like it's hard to be a big guy. Remember, React setting a ball screen, then he's rolling to the basket. You have to defend the guard, then you got to defend, get back, defend the roll, then the shot goes up, you got to box out. Defensively, we ask, in, in college basketball, especially now, we ask a lot of fours at the four and five points. More and more stretch four, stretch fives, covering a lot of space out there defensively as Cheese gets an easy. Smart basketball from Daniel Utomi. A shot fake, one dribble finds his teammate for the layup. Copeland around the screen. Everybody wants to play the stretch four offensively, but it's defensively is where you determine whether or not you're going to stay in the game. It's Fain is foul. Joe Jopoki. Push Fain in the back. At 15.42 to go here in the first half. Akron in front by a score of 10-6. Jeez, Tyler Cheese, proud to be a zip. Charlie Fry, a senior bowl MVP and one of the, what I think it's like 37 starting quarterbacks for the Browns over the past 20 years. Well, he did the Akron to Cleveland thing before LeBron did the Akron. Yeah, that's right. With a little bit less success than <laughs> yeah. LeBron did the and Akron fanfare. <laughs> Noah Kozlov, Doug Gottlieb, and Kristen Balboni with you. Tim Scarborough be along with us for... Paulo is watching from Portugal. Portugal. I hope he's doing it from the beach. Portugal. And Jackson got in the way of Copeland. Tim will join us for so later broadcast throughout the day. So Akron, the, the rubber capital of the world, right? Yep. Portugal's main export, biggest export is what? No idea. Cork. Huh. Anytime you pop a... Oh, wine bottles from, bottle from, from Portugal, yeah? yeah? about that? Yeah. Have you been? Uh, unique story that I could get to if you want, but no, I turned down the chance to play in Portugal to play in France. Huh. First year broadcasting. I bet Den Con like seven games in seven days. Still wanted to play. My agent said, hey, you can go play in Portugal, but you gotta leave tonight. France, but you can leave in two days. And I was working doing local radio at the time, and I had to tell my boss I felt like I needed to do it face to face. But I always wanted to go to Portugal, so it's it's, it's on the bucket list. On the bucket list, all right. So maybe uh, we all heard the story of your wife's 40th birthday yesterday. Hey, so, hey, so, hey, so, hey we so, don't, get, don't, don't need maybe, to restate maybe, her, her, my wife's age. So maybe it could be her 39th birthday since, you know. Got working backwards now? Yeah, women, women age backwards. 10-8, Akron in front, five minutes gone by here in the first half. 
Mike Clemens giving me a shout out on Facebook for my cork knowledge. I have all kinds. I'm like, I look at a little Rain Man facts here. <laughs> As Fame with a big block. Back the other way, numbers, Tinsley. Oh, excuse me, that's Tinsley. Ties it at 10. Daniel thinks Tyler's first name should have been Mackin. No, it's Mac and Cheese. Maybe that's a nickname. Mac and Cheese would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. There's one of those freedom of movement whistles. Watch William Tinsley. That is challenging a shot perfectly without fouling, and then smartly get it back to him. Colfax, Illinois, Tinsley, a senior. About 30 minutes away from normal. The foul was on Tinsley. Ivy for three. Bain tracks it down. Now, Ivy and you told me have taken some questionable three-point shots. Inside the arc, they're outstanding. Look at John Gross, he's in a defensive stance. There's Island White Pants from John Gross. That's a bucket. Yarbrough's got two more. Well, you're gonna, later tonight, you're going to see Roderick Williams play for, for Boise State. Williams, much like Yarbrough, just did it. Undersized four, not a great shooter, but so aggressive, athletic, a tremendous score inside 17 feet. A deep three from Banks, no good. We didn't see Banks much yesterday. Obviously, Akron, this is what I was talking about. He's trying to get minutes, and what a pass from Yarborough. Fain in transition. Neither team has hit a three. They've combined to go 0 for 8, but Illinois State shooting 58%. And they lead by four. Now, Malik Yarborough can do more than score, but here's his skill set. Playing the power forward, finding his center in transition, everybody focusing in on the leading scoring Redbird, and you lose track of that rim runner, Fain. And the big question for the Redbirds would be, would they get off to a good start after really being tight yesterday? And so far, the answer is yes. I mean, that start yesterday against Georgia, Doug, they, they scored the first two points of the game, and then first possession for Georgia was a seven-point possession, a three-pointer, the hook, the and, hook hold and hold foul, yeah. flagrant foul, so then two, and then two, and then that was it. They were down 47-26 at the half. We are, boy. Look at that body. The guy who... I love the way they use him in this offense. You get it to him in the post or off the post. He's a willing passer. You got to find a matchup that works for you. Akron really struggling with that. And Tommy just a little bit too small. When you look at their lineup right now. They, Tommy's the only guy who could guard Yarbrough. Roscoe misses for three. Now he's rebounding, handling the basketball in transition. Let's hit a little drag screen so he gets react on him. To penetrate, kick, Evans, he needs it, and he got it. Keyshawn Evans, the game's first three. And, and a great shot fake, pull up one dribble jump shot, but that's all Yarbrough. And you got your power forward who can bring it up and execute a ball screen. It's like a foul on Evans. Yarbrough, remember this is your power forward who comes down, leading scorer, gets the help, shot fake, one dribble, it's behind the line knocks it down. The, the second line you're looking at, this is confusing, the second line you look at is the international line. Mm -hmm. The international line is not as deep as the NBA line. So if you're watching, the, the first line, it's not the women's line, it's the college basketball. Is that confusing for the players? I would imagine so a bit. I don't think so. I, you usually have pretty good spatial feel. You know, maybe a freshman might take shots from behind the big line just because you search for the deepest line. But most times, you know where it is just based upon the field. Evans to the rack. And he'll go to the free throw line. There has been a push, and I know the NCAA has talked about it, of pushing the three-point line back to the FIBA line. Yeah, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not a 24-second shot clock guy, although it does pick up the pace. I like the, uh, the, the best rule they have in FIBA basketball is on an offensive rebound, it only resets to 14 seconds. Right, which they now have in the NBA. Right, is a great rule. And you have to coach differently. 
but it's great because you get it and there's not time to bring it out and set it up. Like, let's just go. Yeah, it certainly changed the strategy at the end of games, too. Yes. Say hi to Alex Wooten for the zips, Jeremy for the birds. For the product. Dad played in Hawaii Pacific. Tremendous shooting scoring guard. Penetration from Utomi up over Yarborough. No, and a foul on the rebound. Can't tell you how impressed I am with Yarborough. Wasn't perfect defense. But when you're the best player and you're playing well, look at a big smile on his face as he knows he's off to a good start. You told me shot fake and tried to jump into his body, and Yarbrough maintained verticality. Like, the, look, your, your best strategy if you're acting is to get that dude off the floor. Mm -hmm. And driving at his chin and trying to get him in foul trouble isn't a bad strategy, and he wasn't going for it. The foul was on React, his first. And consistent effort's always been the question with Yarbrough, and it seems like he got the message early on here. Watch for the flop. Illinois State on a 13-0 run. Got Utomi on him. Spins, finds Fane. One dribble up at the left hand. And the lead is double digits. They better figure out a way to, to just double Yarborough on the catch. They're waiting, 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 and he is slicing and dicing it. And doing a nice job finding his teammates. He's got two assists to go along with his six points and four rebounds here in the first half. Ivy, like he got away with the travel. Nice pivot. Now pivots and scores. You know, if you watch Akron when they warm up, they do a passing drill where they take one dribble, pivot, pivot, pass to each side. And then you watch them play, and you watch how good they are with their pivot feet. It's no secret why John Gross's teams are excellent at the fundamentals of the game. Fain one-on-one -on -one with React. Ten against ten, and it's ten in gray off the mark. Here comes Banks right to left. Nine minutes gone by here in the first half. Nine point lead for the Redbirds. Tomi got Yarbo up in the air. Great help defense from Chastain and Fain into the corner. Cheese and air ball three. 0 for nine from downtown is Akron. Yarbo working downhill and Banks got him. <laughs> And with 10.42 to go here in the first half, the foul on Banks, a nine-point lead for Illinois State. And oh, she signed a letter of intent there. Anyway, Bayheim's won. Yeah, John and Greg both saying Bayheim. Yep. Okay. You guys, I heard you say the number two. It's a guy, Roy, I'll Roy tell wins. you what, I'm a big fan of him, if that gives it, yes. Yeah, Roy, That's yeah. That's right. Okay. You, um, want, you want number three? Sure. Matt Painter at Purdue. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Boy, is he a good coach. Yeah. I like that. Um, okay, so now give me number four. Number four, Mick Cronin, Cincinnati, and top five, Bob Huggins at West Virginia. I, I didn't know Bob Huggins. I didn't know Mick Cronin went to Cincinnati. And it's funny, you never I know. know he's from Cincinnati. You don't know, like, where they went to school. Well, it's oftentimes, like, where they had one of their first jobs and almost associating coaches with their coaching tree, not necessarily where they went to school. Of course, Bob Huggins coached at Ohio U. Uh, you know, um, but it, no, I'm like, he's a, West Virginia is his alma mater, he played, like it's, it's question, harder with coaches who didn't play in college, right? Like Roy Williams, I remember that he was a grad student at North Carolina, he went there. Mick Cronin didn't play at Cincinnati, so it was, it was it's harder for me. Right, and, we, and we've, seen, we've seen Coach K in his Army uniform. Yes, my dad actually coached against Coach K in the NIT. Oh, really? Yeah. What year was that? 76. Wow. No, no, 70, uh, 74. How 70. about Tinsley from behind against React? So the mid-70s. How about that? Yeah. Fain, good ball movement. Tinsley off the mark with the three. A 15-2 run over the last six minutes. Akron won for their last nine from the floor.
take that one for 10. You tell me this is a three. They're 0 for I, I 10 from three. I think the length of Illinois State is really bothering them, and now they're in this matchup zone. Geez, no. Another tap out. Utomi gets Tinsley in the air, and that'll be Tinsley's second personal foul. Tune in Saturday for a big-time college football matchup. I'll be there calling the game with Max Starks and Danny Kleppinger. FIU can win Conference USA East as they host Marshall. Punch their ticket to the Conference USA Championship game against UAB. You can catch the game at noon exclusively on Facebook Stadium. Welcome to the game. Stephen Miller rooting for Illinois State. Hey, Lisa rooting for the Redbirds. And Ryan, best shooting game I've seen today. Yeah, well, sure. If you haven't seen any other games, I guess this one would be the best, no matter how poorly they're shooting. I pick up on the Facebook sarcasm. You told me. Can't buy it. He's 0 for 3 from 3. Copeland pushed off. Well, it was a push off. But Jackson really sold it. You see Copeland saying, it's weak. Copeland did extend that left arm. You see Jackson there. Not exactly the biggest fellow in the world. Listed at 5'8", 160 from Chicago. Mentioned earlier, Doug, the transfer from Long Beach State. We played 19 minutes a game. Played 32 yesterday and dropped a career-high 25 in the three-point loss to Clemson. Luciano, I hear you. Let's go Zips. 8.45 to go in the first half. Jackson is fouled on the floor by Evans, and that'll be his second. So despite how poorly accurate shooting, still only down nine. Evans, one of the returning starters on this team. Last year, averaged 15 points per game. He's been struggling with the three-point shot so far this season. He's is five for 18 from three. Well, we, we mentioned Lauren Christian Jackson, the Long Beach State transfer yesterday. John Gross was coaching in Illinois when Christian Jackson was playing in high school. So it was not, they had knowledge of him. It's a big thing when you take on players. You know, the entire recruiting class that came in this year to Akron, they all had collegiate playing experience. So Gross obviously understanding get old, stay old, get guys that have already been coached at the collegiate level. But additionally, when you're going to take transfers, you got you, you got to know the kids. And when you're in a place like Akron, you know, your staff and coming from Illinois, you want to have recruited these guys. And, uh, okay, they might not be Big Ten caliber players, but they have to have the right character to compete at Akron. It's not a continuation there. There's the foul. Yeah, it should be. I think so, too. It should be. Mike Williams chimed in, the Redbirds athletic communication staff all watching from the Horton Fieldhouse in Normal. And Jeremy Odser pulling for the Redbirds as well. You know, it should have been a continuation. Obviously the Valley who I think nationally was decimated by first the loss to Creighton and then the loss of Wichita State. And then I said, hey, you know, Loyola Chicago, who everybody said, well, you added two low level programs, them and Valpo at the league, jumps up and becomes America's team, goes all the way to the Final Four. Totally redeems themselves. Completely redeems themselves. And you look around the league and there's some incredible coaching. The facilities are all top notch. Been in the McLeod Center, Northern, the Salukis redid their building. Get a chance to see them this weekend in Las Vegas. How well they played when they took on Kentucky earlier this year. Okay, Southern Illinois preseason number three in the Valley preseason bowl behind Leola and this Illinois State team. And Bradley and you and I round out the top five. So two free throws makes it a touchdown game at 21-14. Akron shooting 26% from the floor. Illinois State shooting 53%. They're only up seven. Only up seven. Yeah, considering how much it feels like they dominated this game, only up seven. Up top, Phil Fain, make it nine. Make it nine. 
just Akron has been completely unable to get Illinois State in any way out of the rhythm offensively. Mark Kostelak into the game for the first time, trying to get the offensive rebound. No, and here comes Yarbrough as the pass deflected in. Utomi takes it away. Third turnover for Illinois State here in the first half. Banks thought about it. Fain got out on him. G's around the screen, and Illinois State switches. Jackson along the baseline. Banks. Little floater over Yarbrough, and he gets it to fall. That's uh, much better offense. You got to credit Lauren Christian Jackson. Penetrating that baseline, staying in bounds, throwing that lateral pass to the corner. Got to be penetration to the cup and then kickouts. You got to get this. Bigger Redbird team moving. Yarbrough now playing the point. That's a deep three, and he cans it. Copeland has three. He went two of seven from deep on Monday. Hey, Eric pulling for Illinois State. Raheem saying hello from Greenwood. At Greenwood, Illinois. Got to be more specific. I'm sure that's, there's not only one Greenwood in the right? <laughs> Just a guess. Copeland. A little horn set. Down the shot clock for Fain against Kostelak. Gets bumped. As he goes across the lane. And the 2 3 zone, you want to always throw that lob from the weak side. Right hander's like it on the right side. You see Fain. A little rim hanging. Kristen, you could do that, right? Kangaroos herbivores, right? And their babies are Joey's or Jill's. And don't they have they have really dangerous kicks, right? Yes, of course. I mean incredibly strong legs. And they fight. They do fight each other. And we're, we're gonna see if the, how much how much zip these kangaroos have, how much fight they have. Well done. There you go. Fear the roo, says Todd. I would imagine many in Akron are saying the same thing. The Zips trail by 10 with six and a half to go here in the first half. Still looking for their first three. They're 0 for 15 from deep in the first half. Ivy, why not? Well off. They can't get the broad side of the barn. Copeland just tries to jump up and over Lauren Christian Jackson. That's one of the, maybe the first selfish shot we've seen from Illinois State. Banks. And you think they're close enough to an ocean, they could throw it in once. <laughs> you see Dan Muller not happy with Copeland's last shot. He got the stomp and the stare. But again, only down 10. Yarbrough. Gets doubled, kick out Jefferson, that's how you do it. Yeah, that's much better basketball. Inside out, throw it to your best player, a triple team comes. As Akron got tired of seeing Yarbrough get all those bank shots on turnaround post-ups. Unfortunately, Akron didn't need to see, send three guys at Malik Yarbrough. Yarbrough out to defend Banks. On the post, it's React against Fain, and he drills him, and then Fain falls. How is that a block? Like, I understand if you don't call a shot. I mean, they may have a large on this deal, but I understand if you don't call. I guess it's, it's your way of saying he flopped. That's a charge. There's zero doubt in my mind. React used his arm to push off to get to the tournament. Right, you're either saying that he flopped or it's a charge. It's not a block. Not, not a foul on feint. Right, and I, and I think that's that would be why the block was called. That's just a bad call. I mean, you, you can't get, you can't get any better any better uh, offensive foul or any more clear look at an offensive foul than Dang React from Melbourne, Australia, transfer from East Carolina. Oh, yeah. Uses his right arm, extends his right arm. Boom. Then you can you can see the right arm move after the contact too.
Jeremy, we agree with you. He's used to fighting for a position, is React. He's one of seven kids. He's got to throw those arms around. Just under five to go in the first half. 12 point lead for the Redbirds. Yarborough, the quick double team with Ivy. Finds Evans. And now throw it back to him. Evans at the free throw line. Too strong. Now, with, with Akron, and I think John Gross smartly has seen enough, so he's just going to double every time Yarbrough gets the ball. If you're, if you're Illinois State, throw it out and then throw it back into one of repost. It's a nice move from React working against Idowu. He's got a little chippiness inside with guys talking trash and the officials. Resetting the shot clock. The officials sort things out with 29 on the shot clock. Uh, now, one thing that that Illinois State could do is instead of posting up Yarborough if they're tired of him being double teamed, is have him get back to running the point guard spot. See Dan Muller, head coach at Illinois State. Got a contract extension in April to extend him through the 23-24 season. Really good career at, at Illinois State as a player, two-time Valley Defensive Player of the Year. Working around, now into the post, Yarbrough, and he's fouled on the catch by Utomi. That, that's, that's his first. That's the idea. Get him a quick touch early, play off the double team, and then throw it back into him. Because the, the defense contracts, expands, and then doesn't have time to contract again. Arizona wants to know, is this live right now? Well, it better be, or else I'm living in some sort of alternate universe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Yarbrough's dad was a hell of a player at Illinois State. Comes back, transfers in from St. Louis. Scored over a thousand points, did Dell there. Coaching change at St. Louis. A couple years ago, he made the move to come back home. He is a grown man who really seems to know his game. Not a great shooter, but he's not somebody who's hunting shots and trying to prove what he can't do. Tough to block his shot, too, since he's so wide. Broad shoulders. Four minutes to go here in the first half. I mean, Akron actually shouldn't feel terrible. They can't hit a shot. They're 0 of 16 from three, and they're only down 11. Ryan tells me I'm in an alternate universe when a team goes 0 for 17 from 3. It's actually 0 for 16. Well, maybe he's got epic foreshadowing. Yeah, Let's maybe. Let's see what happens here. There you go. Oh! oh Ryan! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Ivy finds the ocean. If at first you don't succeed, shoot another 3. An 8-point lead for Illinois State. Back up to 10. Yudowu and Yutomi mixing it up afterwards. This is usually this is a usually a field goal percentage killer when you have to take a three and the shot clock is expiring. But Ivy takes a look at it. He's had four others that he missed. And knocks that one down. Down by the length and toughness and tenacity of this Illinois State team. Now last year they played just seven guys, Akron, and Utomi, Ivy, Kostelak, those were, were three of them, but then you know, Eric Parrish left for Nevada. Rajon Cotton went to LIU. Tory Patton decided to play D2 ball. A lot of new faces out there getting more playing time this year. Yeah, who's your best player transferring up to the batters? Is the one that becomes the coach. Yarbrough pokes it away. Here's 52 in gray. A little finger roll and he gets it. And he only has nine points. But it feels like he's got 20, doesn't it? 
Yeah, and it seemed like yesterday when he had 20, it, it never felt like he was dominating at all in that loss. And he's got nine points and seven rebounds in 14 minutes in the first half. Seems like he's everywhere. And there's Jackson. That's the second time that he's kind of had a jailbreak. Turning that corner and no one home. Goru just lost defensively. Duo kicks it back out. Jefferson tried to give it back to him, and the pass was behind him on the breakout. Ivy, he's got two. This is how much a bad sub can hurt you. You try and get a Dowu in the game, and he's lost defensively. Then he dribbles to nowhere offensively and turns the basketball over, just kind of in the way. And all of a sudden, Ivy with the jailbreak and Akron, who could not hit water if they fell out of a boat in the first half. It's back with an eight. Despite going one for 17 from three, and Illinois State shooting 58% from the floor. It's only an eight-point game, and just even looking at turnovers, there haven't been many. Seven combined, Illinois State with four, and Akron with three. So Jamon Ivey played so well before he got to the island. Obviously, they got a little overwhelmed with the athleticism of Clemson yesterday. That game was a foul fest. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. Ah, to turn this that first half. Yes. Kelly and Pucciano like the way Jamon Ivey played on the breakout. You're just jealous of that name, Pucciano, aren't you? By the way, did not fooling Dan Muller. You see he pulled out a double out. Yeah, that was a quick hook. We just lost defensively, and then, you know, anytime a guy kid catches the basketball and just dribbles to nowhere and picks it up and gets tied up, he's not ready for this. Fain short arms it. Jackson pulls up from deep. So, so you see, you don't need that. You're not, you're not down six with a minute to go in the game. Ivy's playing better. He just hit a three and got a dunk. Get him the basketball. That's what your job is as a point guard. Guy hits a couple shots after missing everyone in the first half and then gets a dunk. That's the guy you want to have take your next shot. Jefferson. He's got two of those. And the lead is back up to 11. And I put that one on Warren Christian Jackson. Had momentum. Illinois State struggling a little bit to finish. Yarbrough out of the game, and he takes a transition through. Roscoe penetrates, kicks, gets it back. The three, it's good. Jeremy Roscoe from beyond the FIBA line makes it an eight-point game again. Also a smart sub from John Gross as he goes small here down the stretch, getting Roscoe, the offensive player, in, now getting him off for defense. Let's see if Illinois State goes quick two for one. Probably not time. You go to John Gross, he's already got his offensive call in. Spent five years in Illinois, four at Ohio. Great idea. He knows they're going to come down, try and score quick. Goes to a quick one, three, one. Unfortunately, it looks like Tyler Chief five. React might turn his ankle. It's like React, they might have banged knees there. That's going to be React's second personal foul. Todd, I think you're misinformed saying negative comments again about John Gross. He's had success and expect him to have some success again. Well, here's why I think it's always, it, it makes sense if you're, if you're at it, when they made the high. It was John Gross had success in the league mm -hmm. at Ohio U. Um, and it's, he can simply recruit essentially the same guys that he was recruiting at Illinois. And if you don't get him, you get him as transfers, as bounce, as bounce back guys. You're not bringing him, you know, you're not bringing him to a new market where he has to learn new AU coaches and new tournaments and new everything. He also plays a style, honestly, it's fun to watch and fun to play. But the problem is fans, they, they don't know what they don't know, and they want to comment about it because they weren't good enough at Illinois. He never figured out the point guard situation. He had one kid who kept getting hurt. 
ultimately derailed. Utomi hits for three. And remarkably, that's how the half ends with Akron making a three. As they go three for 20. And, and but they hit three of the last four. Well, well Daniel Utomi, he took a couple bad shots in the first half. And this is not a great shot, but the shot clock is off and he steps into one. I mean, think of your actor. They could not make a shot almost the entire first half. And Illinois State badly outplayed them. And yet to make a couple threes, get a run out, and down just five at the half. Down to Kristen. Coach, you told us before this tournament started that the biggest thing your team needed to improve on was their defense. How do you feel they played defensively in the first half? Well, we started to fight from the beginning of the game as opposed to waiting until we were down. Our foul trouble really hurt us, but I like our fight. And on the offensive side of the ball? Well, we're moving the ball. Malik's been great. Again, foul trouble hurt us. Some of our better offensive players were out. As long as we fight, I'll be okay. All right, Coach, thank you so much for the time. He wasn't in foul trouble. He just at times ran out of gas and was playing so well. But 16 really effective minutes for Malik Garber. Yeah, we talked about what the shooting struggles have been, and, and really everything else just pretty even here in that first half. Let's see if we can find any sort of continuity. Statistical, statistical anomaly or something? something well, I think that both is... these teams are looking for some sort of continuity in the second half, but I, I can't find any statistical anomalies. So, so Ben says Illinois State plus three and a half in, this, in the second half. What do you like? <laughs> You're the one looking up lines before the game. <laughs> Yeah, but not not to put any money on it. Just to know what just, the know ex, just to know what the experts think of how the game may go. Do they really? Is there a calculation that they really sure. know? That, like they knew that they always know they knew that Akron was going to go three of twenty from three. Oh no! Michael, uh, excuse me, Robert says they need to put on that one three one trap. I like the way that Akron used it. They used it just because at the end of the first half, you know Illinois State's going to run a play. It takes you out of your play set. Andrew wants you to give a pick, but when you're calling a game, I, I usually stay away from it. Why? Because I don't want anybody thinking what I'm like, pulling like for. Like rooting for it? Yeah. I, I actually have the ability to, even if I make a pick, I, I'm, I'm willing to be wrong. It's okay to be human to be wrong. Oh, sure. I just don't see any reason to do it. React against Fane. And Fane wins that one. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate the love. Inside Yarbrough gets double teamed immediately. Evans, three ball, corner pocket. Well off. Well, anyway, the experts think that this is going to be a, you know, accurate minus three and a half in the second half means it'll be a close game. But they, they, they think it's come down to the last possession game. That's what I'm rooting for. So that's what you're picking. Sure. <laughs> Copeland, <laughs> top of the key three. Ooh. Yikes. I mean, if, look, if you're, this is not hard if you're Illinois State. They could not guard Malik Yarborough man-to-man -man in the first half. How about throw it to 52 in the gray shape? And even once he gets double teamed, what about getting the ball right back to him? Right. Or play off of the double team and you get any shot you want. Oh, they got that shot with Evans and wasn't close. Now Yarbrough is standing over there talking to Dan Muller. With Matt Chastain checking in. I think the reason is uh, one minute into the half to talk to your star. As Banks. Do they count it? I'm sure he didn't like something. It was something he told him to have to do, and he didn't do it. That's generally what it is. And they do count it. Given how the continuation didn't work in the first half, wasn't exactly sure. And Banks would go to the line looking for the three-point play. The foul on Matt Chastain, who just checked in. Chastain, who, of course, replaced Yarbrough. Gets caught not being able to, to force Banks to his left hand. Banks ends up with the end one. Banks Rock in the Kobe's. Big miss free throw with no Yarbrough in the game. Three-point lead for Illinois State. Fane collects and has an easy bucket. Well, much better offense there from Evans, who comes off the ball screen. Could have had the mid-range floater, but instead 
just throws it up to his big guy. I thought it was deflected. Evan still found a way to corral it and lay it in. Steven wants to know if, I don't know if it's us or anybody trying to grab chilies after this game. I wouldn't mind food, but I also don't know where Steven is. I appreciate the invite if, in fact, he was talking to us. We're meeting at Chili's, is that what we're doing? I don't know. I think Steven's headed there. Got another game to call. Now, I, I've been told that you guys are getting great barbecue delivery. What time is, do we know what time the barbecue is coming? Because I think it's right in the middle of the Doug Gottlieb show. Disappointing. It's called, New, called, it's it's called the radio program today? Yeah, you can listen to the Doug Gottlieb show on Fox Sports Radio, the iHeartRadio app. While you're watching these games, I'll be back to call our final game of the night, right? Yep. That's uh, the Creighton game. Yes. Creighton won last night. They'll take on Georgia State. Yep. And if Georgia State loses and Georgia loses to Clemson, then those two will be forced to play each other. All the way to the hoop. It's Copeland. Five-point lead again for Illinois State. Working around, and Banks is fouled on the three. That mother saying, no way. You can hear it. And then the official said, ask him. Ask him. And Tinsley's like. Well, Tinsley had the block on the says, three earlier in the game. <laughs> that, that was awesome. That, that was awesome. If, if you watch it, Tinsley blocks the shot. The foul was called very early, right, right after the play. Right after the play. And the officials said, ask him. Ask him if he foul, because Dan Muller says, no way, no way. Tinsley says, no, it was all ball. Nice Lauren. Christian Jackson kicks out. Oh, it looked like he got the ball. It did. The best part was the back and forth with the official. Brian wants to know if you're calling for any of these teams to be NCAA tournament teams, the two that we're seeing right now. Uh, no, but like, look, I think Akron's got a chance to be really good in the MAC. The problem with the MAC is, yeah, Buffalo, I think it's a very talented group. And so I would Buffalo would be my favorite. Buffalo, obviously, already beating teams that are NCAA caliber teams. Yeah, now ranked 22. Um, and then, you know, Illinois State, we'll see what happens with the Bowers. I'm intrigued if they start get, getting more respect because of, uh, of what Loyola Chicago is able to do. Yarbrough, great look, but Jefferson can't finish. Keep an eye on A.J. Green, the freshman point guard for Northern Iowa. Kid originally, from, he's from Cedar Falls. 6-4 point. Tremendous talent. He's got a deer screen. A lot of teams running at the end of shot clock. Jackson, the high floater, no. Poke back out, here comes Jefferson. Two on one with Yarbrough. Yarbrough oh. misses the dunk. Yarbrough just running so hot and cold. You saw him apologize to Jefferson. Jefferson dropped the perfect dime to him. Nate likes it. Going for Akron. Trailing by two. Akron last led 10-8. About four minutes into the game. React well off. Yeah, Not a good possession from Akron. Yeah, well, the ball never got off the left side of the floor. Chris pulling for Akron. Jefferson, the mid-range. Bottom left of the backboard. Jackson, the quick trigger. And Akron's back in front. And he's looking for the and, foul. And he thought he got fouled. Look, Lauren Christian Jackson, he took a, there's some of it's about timing, right? Took a bad one in the first half, I thought, after they finally broke the seal in three-point shot. But this is how they got back in the game yesterday against Clemson. Transition, this is a good shot. Got your momentum going down the court, step in and hit a three. Splash as Illinois State has struggled to find offense here in the second half with Malik Yarbrough struggling. You know, God wasn't a Carolina fan, he would have made this sky Carolina blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, That's right. That's I, I actually, I actually had, had drinks with Kobe one night, and I was talking about how, like, you know, you you completely dispelled the myth about the high top. And he said, do you know where the myth of the high top? The myth of the high top is the high tops protect you from spraining your ankle. They really don't. Tape does, ankle braces do, high tops don't. I'll explain in a second as Copeland drives in and draws the, draws the block. He told me that Nike kind of came up with that idea, is that Converse already had, when Converse had, uh, you know, Converse original and pro heads, you go back to the 70s and yeah. the 80s, Nike had to differentiate themselves when they got into basketball, and that they, they, wanted, to, they wanted to protect your ankles. And so they had high tops. That was going back to the 1980s Nikes. But I, I love that guys are playing I think a low I've top taken now. You, ha you have to get you have to get taped anyway. Most school, most coaches make you get taped. Um, I don't know if any of those some of those guys don't look like they're taped. But a lot of coaches used to make you get taped. I mean, you're better off doing ankle strength and stuff. But getting taped is more important than wearing high tops. Who's your team? Who are your teams? I grew up in Philadelphia. Yeah. So last year Super Bowl, you didn't sit in a different place. I watched I watched the Super Bowl at, uh, at an apartment where I'd never watched the game before. Are announcers allowed to bet on games? I don't know. I think it's frowned upon, but I think you're allowed. I never have. I will tell you that it's one of, one of the most enjoyable exercises, and I wouldn't tell you if I've ever partaken in it, but I've been told by, by sources close to me, is that when you call a game from Vegas, bet on the game you're calling but not tell anybody. Oh, yeah. And see if you can call a game straight <laughs> where you're not actually cheering <laughs> at the end. So that's when you test your true professionalism. Back guy in for Jackson. Well, you're going to have that. Aren't you going out to Vegas to call some games in a few days? I am. I'm calling two games. The great thing is I'm calling two games in the morning on Thursday, and then the big games on Fox, I get a chance to watch. So I go. But there's also so many other games, and there's NFL football. Yep. Oh, there's no shortage of things to do. Yarborough gets two. Nice move inside to Illinois State now. Up by three. Cheese. Back rims it. Yarborough with another rebound. That's his ninth. Andrew says Musburger did. As Chastain kicks it out. Should have taken the layup. Take the layup. Take the layup. Take the layup. That was a wide open layup. Take it. Happens all the time now. Well, it's different if there's a guy there and you have to finish over length. If you have a dead layup, take it every time. He who makes the most layups wins. Geez, splits the defense. Floater, no. Bain, another rebound. That's his seventh. Yarbrough's been unable to get it going here in the second half. Yarbrough has it knocked away by Cheese. It'll stay Illinois State basketball with 12 in the shot clock. Tyler Cheese, the Juco transfer. Southwestern State in Florida. Austin says, uh, what do you think about the 2-3 zone from the Redbirds? The wings seem to play higher than a typical 2-3. One of the things that's become in vogue. That Syracuse style 2 3 zone, which is really more of a 2 1, 2 2 1 zone. All depends on who you have in the back line. The part of it is, guys aren't comfortable in the high post. The turnover and almost the finish, and Ivy is fouled. This has got to be frustrating for Dan Muller. Mm -hmm. You finally get back the lead, you have it under control, inbounds play under your own basket, and it's one thing to turn it over. Un underneath out of bounds. Another thing to turn it over and give out a run out. What well, could have been an and one. So who do you see in Vegas this weekend? Uh, all right, so it's a it's it's technically an eight team tournament, but it's really a four team tournament from the Las Vegas Invitational. Hmm. Uh, so uh, the games on Thursday, early Thursday morning, are UMass versus Southern Illinois. Followed by Nevada, who we saw last night here on Stadium, beat uh, Cal Baptist. Nevada taking on Tulsa. So those are the early games. The games that follow are Texas versus North Carolina and Michigan State UCLA. Oh. Some big boys. 
big boys. And I, don't, I don't know if you've seen him. UCLA has a big kid who's super talented, Moses Brown. Seven footer. Yeah, one of the top recruits in the country. Yeah. Cody Riley's still out. Mm -hmm. 45 44 lead for Dan Muller's team. The foul was on Utomi, that's his second. Chastain and Yarbrough with Evans, Jefferson, and Idowu. There's Yarbrough, gets blocked. Oh boy, stay, Daniel, Illinois State you, basketball. Daniel Utomi struggled so mightily with Yarbrough in the first half. At that time, Yarbrough had React on his back, and Utomi recovered really quickly to go block that shot. Michael asked me if I think Les Miles will turn around KU football. Look, that's a difficult thing. Can he just call on your radio show and ask you that? We don't do calls. So hand out your phone number. Ask you on Twitter. KU football during this basketball game? That's a good question. And he gets bailed out. Does he do? With the shot clock. Expiring, Utomi picks up his third personal foul. Justin asked if I said the four teams playing early don't matter. No, what I'm saying is I'm broadcasting games early. Mm -hmm. the I games mean, betting on the games later. The, well, the, I didn't say I was, oh. but if I were to bet, I could bet on the games later, still be there, and I wouldn't do anything that was frowned upon. If I were betting. Who played 14 minutes yesterday. And he struggled in the first half. Trying to find a, a rhythm offensively. Gets two at the free throw line. Scott wondering why Akron's just fouling so much. Illinois State, four for four from the line here in the second half. Just to, follow up, just to follow up on Justin, he says, because it's an 18 tournament. It's not really an 18 tournament. There's, there's two separate, it's like this tournament, that in, uh, or a lot of these tournaments, there's like two separate four-team tournaments going on at once, right? Nevada wins both games. They don't play Texas or Michigan State. It's like two four-team tournaments. Mm. Technically, there's eight teams there, but one side of the bracket, one bracket doesn't interact with the other side of the bracket. Tommy got Chastain in the air, and now it's Jackson. Nice, nice. pass for React. Well, Lauren Christian Jackson has played well. He struggled probably the first 14, 15 minutes yesterday. He seemed to struggle. Got to go in the second half. Today, he's, for the most part, been in much more control. Tommy, Dean up Evans, and they throw it away. And Dan Muller. Not pleased, and I don't blame him. That's turnover number six. Chad wants to know who your favorite mascot is around the country. Pistol Pete. I would imagine at Oklahoma State. Yeah. It is scary for the little kids, though. That giant, Jeez. gigantic head. Did we get to count that one? He didn't get the continuation in the first half. Was it Cheese who didn't get the continuation in the first half as well? Or was it Utoma? I don't remember, but I don't think he's getting that one. Uh, Austin says, following back up in that 2-3, with the wings high, it leaves the short corner wide open. Strange that teams don't attack that. Well, the problem with the short corner is... It's, it's a place where if you execute the zone correctly, you can trap that short corner and you have to have really good spacing. But I agree, Attack the short corner, which is usually below the level of the backboard, inside the three-point line, if you hit there, it flattens out the defense. My feeling is against those, against the, the, all of these zones, the old days of always running zone offense should be dead. Run man-to-man -man offense, set ball screens against it, so you have your natural ball handlers penetrating inside of the defense and then kick out for jump shots. We're tied at 47 with 12.15 to go. Yarbrough attacks. Almost threw it away. 
Copeland, left hand, no, Yarbrough. Idowu is the one who cleans it up. And Idowu, this is what a turnaround for him, as poorly as he played in the first half. Now he's got four in the second half. And back the other way, a three from the Zips. And it's Ivy putting Akron up by a point. Uh, Ivy can carry them in a hurry. And you look at how much more confidently Akron is playing. It's not just making shots, they're playing better at both ends. Whereas Yarbrough, that's a terrible shot for him. A fourth shot from Yarbrough, and we are under 12 at 11.45 to go. Akron up by a point, and over to Kristen. I'm going to take Duke, although man, Auburn is, I don't know if you saw that dunk Jared Harper had. Jared Harper, tougher than a $2 steak, man. A tremendous point guard. Auburn plays that kind of funky style with a press. They pressure you, they shoot a lot of threes. And there's a three. Akron, three of six from downtown. Utomi has one. So three of six from three in the second half. The four-point lead for Akron. Jefferson Ooh. and one. An amazing change to this game. I mean, in the, the first, if you're watching earlier, the first 10, 12 minutes were completely dominated by Malik Yarbrough. Completely. And the Redbirds could not put Akron away, couldn't hit a shot to miss their first 16 threes. Yarbrough now, he's out of the game. And he's just kind of been forcing a little bit in the second half, missed the dunk. Whereas Illinois State's turned to Jefferson, Copeland, some to run their offense, trying to find other ways to generate points. Meanwhile, Akron much more in a rhythm offensively as opposed to the first half, and they were forcing things. The record just had their largest lead of the game at four. Now the three-point play cuts it to one. Paul's got to move. She's just holding on there too long. Fain on the floor. It'll stay Akron basketball. We have more college football coming your way on Stadium. Two games on Saturday, 6 o'clock. You can join us for Charlotte versus FAU. That's where Kristen's going to be on Saturday. Stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Ability. You could stay on football for a moment. Jameson wants to know who you've got winning it all in college football. I can't see anybody beating Alabama, but how about you? Well, I think Clemson's getting the heck of a game. See how Akron's gotten back into this game. Six for 10 for three since 0 for 16. Missing one there. And the putback from Utomi. Daniel Utomi, who struggling defensively, couldn't find a shot offensively. Still only has eight points, but a totally different energy out of the break. And Yarbrough has been missing in action in this second half. Banks for three. Around and out. Well, if you're Dan Muller, you get, you got to find a way to get get an easy shot, get a clean look. Here they go into their hawk set. That's what Eric Browning's hoping for. Jefferson, pull up, mid-range, got it. Jefferson, two straight buckets in a row. You got to process that. And Josh Jefferson now in a rhythm with the Copeland looking in transition. Tommy, the blow by, and the three. Allowed Chastain to go right on by and then took his time and lined it up. And Chastain has just struggled athletically. He was late there and got caught in the shot play. Jefferson right back. Three in a row. All of a sudden, it's become a clinic. 58-57, Akron in front. More than halfway through here the second half. Jackson got Chastain on skates, and Copeland got his hand in there. All tied up, and it'll be Akron basketball. Well, we mentioned Daniel Utomi. Here's a guy who shot 40% from three last year. Just a shot fake, great rhythm. I love the fact that he pivoted using his right foot as his pivot foot. He didn't travel. Josh Jefferson won a state title his senior year at New Albany High School in Indiana. Go, 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 
played Juco ball at Lakeland College in Mattoon, Illinois. The only reason I know how to pronounce it, Mattoon, is from Will Leach. Big Georgia fan, Deadspin founder from Mattoon, Illinois. Takes great pride in it. Jefferson, while you're up, fill her up again! He's got 17, a two-point lead now for Illinois State as we go back and forth. Jackson foul. And Lauren Jackson, who he didn't drive the ball nearly enough yesterday against Clemson. Clemson, more athletic bigs. I think he's figured out against this Illinois State team, even with Fain in there. That you can turn that corner. He's got two layups and several assists, simply turning the corner on ball scores. Started his career playing for Dan Munson out at Long Beach State. 49ers. This is his first free throw of the day. He's now six of seven. Remember to use that hashtag came in classic as Bank sits out. Post your photos on Instagram. Yarbrough back in the game. Keep an eye on Illinois State. Tinsley's got four fouls. But Fain, Evans, Copeland all with three personal fouls. 8.40 to go. And don't really worry about the guys with three fouls once you get under the seven minute mark. Uncharacteristic misses both. Went six of eight yesterday from the line. He is six of eight today is Jackson. Had a chance to tie the game. Instead, it's Illinois plus two. Copeland just beyond the free throw line. This is right. Back comes Ivy. You told me. He's feeling it. That's a good board by Copeland. As Jefferson controls, back over to Copeland, and they'll set up the offense as we approach the eight-minute mark. Fain on the block against React. Fain with the left hand, and he's fouled. If he'd gone with the right hand, he wouldn't have got the foul call. Goes up with the left hand into the body and gets the whistle. 7.56 to go here in the second half. The lead is two for Illinois State. It was four. See, I would, you know, Jefferson shooting as well as he shot. And now you look at who Akron has in defensively. I, I want to find a way to get Kostelak on Yarborough away from the basket. You don't want to post up Kostelak. Mm -hmm. That dude plays post defense since the day he came out of the room. But if you get him moving your feet, and if you do post up Yarborough, you want it to be off the block and have, have Jefferson somewhere in the vicinity so you double off him and you get your hottest shooter catching the shooter basket. And see what John Gross runs coming out of that timeout. Cost a little handoff action. Well, handoff with Cheese and Tyler Cheese. That's great stuff. Cost like fake like he was setting a little pin down, came up, said had a weak side handoff. That's a hard, that's hard basketball to defend. Fain at the free throw line. One dribble, strong take. Good enough. The, the lefty wants to go at Kostelak. That's smart to get him away from the basket where Kostelak's at his weakest point defensively. Good first step from Phil Fain. Four-point lead for Illinois State as we approach seven minutes. Cheese again. Good defense by Fain. Here's Yarbrough in transition. Tinsley. For three, around and out. Jeremy Roscoe back into the game. Gonna get a little bit of offense for Akron. The penetrating kick with Utomi, and then Utomi fires. Not a good shot. A, a catch and shoot, even a catch and shoot contested three is better than a catch. You know, foot fake, foot fake, jump up three. That's a hard shot. Now 
Burrow inside. It's good defense by Utomi. Forced the off-balance shot. He used his body, not his hands. That's why there's no foul. Ivy can't get the roll. Ball poked around. Jefferson comes down with it. Akron's one for their last six. Scoreless going on two minutes. Ivy sheds Kostelak. Fain has really found a matchup that he likes as Kostelak just too slow to recover. A tremendous call. Dan Muller, he says, hey, just go set a high ball screen with Yarbrough. Everybody paying attention to Yarbrough. Meanwhile, Fain comes from the weak side, a quick post up, a low angle bounce pass. Kostelak late getting there, and Fain with his second straight buck. A little high ball screen. Watch as Fain goes from one side of the block to the other, whips in defensively, and Kostelak late reaches and ends it up face down. Fain does a little rim hang. Like an offensive lineman who just got beat by a sack. Now, what happens is you're so trained to watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball, that Fain smartly goes underneath him, kind of behind him when he's not looking, and gets post position. Probably should have just stayed behind him and, and tried to be big, but he, he reached and went for the steal, and that's why he was late. We know Ben's going to be hanging with us. Steven and Nick going for Illinois State up by six now with 5.36 to go. They want a big Phil Fane fan also. Tommy, react. Never had the ball. You tell me, you tell me one, he never had the ball, and he never passes the ball when he gets in low. Now, I'm not sure I would have passed it down in that low, but that's the third time he's had a weak side shooter open. Jackson getting the ball out of Copeland's hands. And then you tell me, fouls Yarbrough. Jarbrough tried to get possession and position in the high post. You hear, you hear Dan Muller saying, what's the new rule? That's why that was called a foul. They're trying to take the physicality out of the pre-catch action in post play. Michael wants to know why Akron isn't playing zone. Well, if you watch this game, you saw that Jefferson has been shooting the eyes out of the basketball. It's also hard to play zone when you have uh, Lauren Christian Jackson, who's a tremendous man-to-man -man defender. There's just so little in the zone. Does time have to do with the two? Uh, no, not yet. Not necessarily. Defense, they're playing excellent defense. Start. I think it's really been their offense and, their, and, their, and the, the shots they've taken. Akron going on three minutes now without a field goal. They trail by six. They're seven of 33 from three pointers. Jackson, Fain won't have any of it. And if there, there is a fair critique of John Gross's team is that his teams do play a little bit too free and easy in terms of shot selection. Jackson is just not a great finisher, and he's small. But I like that he's still penetrating, whereas yesterday he was avoiding some of that penetration, etc. Utomi has to shoot it with the shot clock expiring, and it'll stay Akron basketball if Jefferson and Fain couldn't communicate. Sergio not thrilled with Akron's spacing, and see what John Gross calls on the out-of-bounds play. What's the matter with their space? <laughs> they had one second in the shot clock. I don't think they have a spacing problem. They generally have the lane empty with React as the roll man. React is going to catch and hand off and then roll. You told me again. Top of the key three around and out. And a foul on the floor. It's going to be on Fane. His fourth. 
great set they drew up, had a great look. Tomy's on balance, that's a good shot. Good space. I mean, look, we can go possession by possession if, if you want to know if it's good spacing or bad spacing or good offense or bad offense. I like that set. Most people just run the handoff. They ran a handoff into a re-screen. They got exactly the shot that they want. And you can tell me, Daniel, you tell me should stop shooting threes. He's a 40% three-point shooter. That was a good look. Yeah, Aaron acting like he's a Habitat for Humanity volunteer today, building homes. 3 for 11. Got 11 points. Team's only down by four. All right. You got a timeout coming. You got to react out of the game. You got to recognize personnel and what you're running. And Akron likes to do this. When they know you're going to run a set play, they'll go to their 1-3-1 one, one, Three quarter court track. Falls back into a two three zone. And a turnover. Banks intercepted it. Jackson blocked by Tinsley. He's done that before. But Tinsley got called for a foul that he said didn't happen on a three point shot. And a great block on Jackson earlier, driving to the basket. Jackson's going to be seeing Tinsley in the sleep tonight. Yarborough get the breather right before the four-minute media timeout. Get an extended breather. Oh, Jackson carried that. Cheese. It's a cutting Utomi. Did he travel? Well, that's where he Utomi, did. as good an athlete as he is, not really comfortable in that role. I like the I like the set. They got what they wanted. But you told me just travel. But, but thinking about the opponent, didn't have to do it very often. Fair enough. I did catch a Seinfeld last night after the uh, Monday Night Football game. Illinois State leads by four. Three forty to go. Out of the timeout, Fain. And he'll go to the free throw line. It's going to be the fifth on React. So React will foul out after playing 23 minutes, nine points on three of seven to go along with six rebounds. Uh, this is a big question for John Gross. Do you go small or do you go big? Kostelak really struggles in this game to guard the bigs. I would go small. Leave Kostelak out. Let's see what he does. Exactly what he does. The winner of this game will end up playing the winner of St. Bonaventure and Boise State that game at 5 Eastern today. And the losers will play each other tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, so Fane came from uh, Western Nebraska Community College. You where, you, do you know where that is? That's in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Don't, excuse me, it's in... Don't know it. Yeah. Huh? Don't know it. Don't know it? Uh, about 15,000. Where in the state? Western Nebraska. Oh, Western Nebraska, okay. It says Western Nebraska Community College. I'm not, I'm not up on my... Uh, Nebraska geography. And well, it's called Western Nebraska. I guess I guess not up on my listening either. <laughs> Utomi gets the flyby. And Yarbrough gets the rebound. And so now if you're Illinois State, you've got to recognize they have no bigs in the game. No bigs in the game. So even if they're in a man, they're in a zone, you need to get a paint touch. You need to look at it. Or if you take a jump shot, Yarbrough and Fane need to hit the glass. An offensive rebounds. Tinsley as well. John likes that move from Yarbrough, but he misses. Fane hustles for the loose ball. Tinsley has it. A fresh 30. They'll pull it back out and run some clock. 
find where your mismatch is. One thing about Yarborough, as good as he is as, a, as an attack big guy, he doesn't want to attack Ivy off the dribble. Fane, not soft enough. Ivy's on the floor, haven't heard his name much in the second half. Now, if you're Akron, you're playing with five guards. Penetrate and kick. You've got all three-point shooters, but you need to take those layups and take those free throws. And that's going to put Jackson on the free throw line. <laughs> this is what happens. Nicholas is game over. Like, no, it's not. It's 68-62. You got a chance to make it a four-point game. And Illinois State hasn't shown the ability to take advantage of the size disparity. See John Gross, you hear what he said, you guys got to get stops now. Both teams have a distinct mismatch at their end of the floor. Who can overcome that mismatch and get a stop and then take advantage of the mismatch on offense? John Gross, the longtime assistant under Thad Mata at Ohio State and Xavier. Dan Muller had a, had a brief pro career at Summer League with the then he was the Vancouver player, Grizzlies. Played for Kevin Stallings at Illinois State. Mm -hmm. Played overseas in Belgium and Argentina. So two for two for Jackson, 68-64. Chastain. The offense, it's rare and it's there. A bucket from an unexpected source puts Illinois State up by six. Cheese. One for their last 12 from three. Banks, no. They'll fight for it. Cheese had it, lost it, gets it back. And I think Yarborough is going to be whistled and that was, for the that, foul. Some of that was Chastain's fault for not boxing out, but he tried. He just couldn't, couldn't move you, told me. But Fane, Fane got caught not doing anything, just kind of watching the basketball. Dan Muller tried to adjust to the smaller lineup and took Tinsley out of the game. It worked for him offensively with Chastain getting the bucket, but defensively, they just gave up an offensive rebound, potentially two points. is seven for 38 from three, and they're still only down four. You still can't figure it out either, as Illinois State is shooting 49% from the floor. Well, I mean, Illinois State's only six of 14 from three. And they have eight fewer field goals. There it is. Shot clock at 20, game clock at 90 seconds in a four-point game. Cody thinks the Redbirds need to score right here. I'd say so, and if Ben's still watching, he needs it also. Copeland where, where throws it away. Where are you, Ivy! Where are you going? Two-point game! And Jefferson's wide open on the other side of the floor. Wide open. And Dan Muller not trusting the offense here to run something without the timeout. I mean, just so frustrating with your coach. I mean, he's, I mean, look, Jefferson could not be more wide open. And he jumps in the air and throws nobody and gives up a pick six. Said just a few moments ago that we hadn't heard much from Ivy in the second half. Uh, it's a big pick six there. He's got 16 points. And he's played a game high 36 minutes. Who was the guy who said it's over? We had some, it's over. Uh, we we're like, it is, it is so not over. It felt like it was over in the first seven minutes of the game, and it wasn't. It felt like it was over at the half, and it wasn't. There was a few it's over with four minutes left. There was a few it's over if Illinois State scores here, but Illinois State hadn't scored, and 
Akron, despite the four for 18 from three in the second half, the seven for 38 from deep for the game. They're down two with a buck 17 to go. I don't know if Chastain fouled him there, but it was just dumb to try and chase him down. Here's that one three one look that's really given Illinois State problems. He's got a piece of it. Jefferson got it back. Now it's Yarbrough. Swings it. Evans, big time three around and out. Chastain has it. Yarbrough takes it away from his own teammate. Then he misses it. Chastain gets it again. Finds Fain. Charge. Illinois State does know they're the ones that are up by two, right? They, do, they are aware. Seems they got, like they're they, playing they, panic they, basketball. Yes. Up by two. That was my point. Fain fouls out on that. And Dan Muffer's trying to get everybody to take a deep breath. He might need one himself. Listen, they're, they're, all it is is a 1-3-1 one, one track. That's it. You played against it your whole life. Get a guy in the high post. 2-1-2 two, two set. You get double teamed. Take your time. See the double come. You don't have anything. Back dribble. Run some clock. Find the best shot. And then attack the offensive board. Guards get back. Where are Akron's bigs? Akron's big react fouled out. That's a relative of Mark Kostelak asking that question. I wouldn't be crazy to use Mark Kostelak to get a bucket right here, but I like playing five small. I don't like that shot. And I know Lauren Christian Jackson's a good shooter, and you got a two for one, so I don't mind that. But I would have preferred a catch and shoot three. Yarbrough. Why is he in a hurry? And he'll well, go they, to the line as he gets bailed out. Well, they had to shoot once, and it's not terrible to get your best player attacking the basket. But man, his confidence just, he went from playing so well, so confident, smiling, kind of bouncing as he stepped to, he drove in there not knowing really, okay, should I go in here or should I not go in here? So now you gotta have two plans if you're active. If he makes it, you're up four, you wanna push, get a quick bucket, you do have a timeout. If he misses, I would come down and run something for a quick three. Three point game. If you get a layup, take it. Jackson, cheese. Now you gotta go. Ivy's gonna come over, and John Gross. It's going to call a timeout with 12.7. Birds, you know, if he, if he gets under seven, you're going to want to foul. But 12.7 seconds fouling, you run the risk of fouling on a three, that's probably too dangerous. And all, all this should be practiced. End of game fouling, end of game execution, side inbounds. Run something you practice. Sipper set. It's a good play. It's Ivy, a deep three. And Jefferson grabs the rebound and he's fouled. I think he could have got a better shot than that. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with the shot. I mean, you, you, you run an inbounds play which bang, bang. I just didn't like that they didn't have something planned to come down and get a quick three or get a potentially a layup as everybody's hugging up on threes when you're down three late and you had plenty of time to lengthen the game. But I mean, that, that was a nice play. Where you end up getting a double screen for an open jump shot. Just miss it. Jefferson perfect at the free throw line. He's two of two. Tied for a team high 18 points. Well, Jefferson's offense really failed out Illinois State as Dan Muller's gonna call a timeout and set his defense. From the Tigers. Two pretty good football programs, too. We may see a chance we see Clemson, Georgia. We could. College football playoff. Jackson runs it up the floor. Leaves it off for Cheese. The three is long, and Tinsley has the rebound. And Illinois State holds on 73-68. And it is better to win ugly than lose pretty, isn't it? And it wasn't pretty for Illinois State, but the Redbirds will take it. 
after playing outstanding basketball for about the first 15 minutes of the game. Defending the three-point line pretty well as well. They survive Akron, who they just kept fighting. Akron ends up 7 of 41 from three. Some bad, some bad takes, some untimely shots. They're now 18 for 70 over the two games. That's suboptimal. So Illinois State will go on to play the winner of St. Bonaventure and Boise State I mean, tomorrow. And you see where Akron will get the loser. I actually think Akron should feel pretty good. Like, you don't feel good. The fact good. that they were still in it, despite yeah. the way they shot. Yeah. I mean, look, there's some decisions they made when they got in it that, you know, I, I thought Christian Jackson took another untimely shot in the first in the second half. I thought Utomi took a couple bad shots. But to survive Illinois State and to be right there with a chance to win the game. Got to take the positives from the loss where everybody feels negative walking into the locker room. For Doug Gottlieb, Kristen Balboni, I'm Noah Koslov. That's one of four today. Visit watchstadium.com or search.